um, grown in the, in the last couple of years, then looking at some really new things that are happening in the digital space as well. Um, so a little bit about us, we started, can everyone see these? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. um, yeah, so we started uh, five years ago in 2009. Um, uh, we're now one of New Zealand's most well-resourced digital marketing agencies. Um, we've got a team of 12 based here in uh, Wellington, up Naval Smith Street. And our clients range, um, it's mainly New Zealand clients, we do have a, some international clients as well from Australia, um, and also um, in New Zealand clients that are actually um, in those different markets, which is uh, really exciting for us, so um, in US and Europe as well. Um, we've been able to achieve 100% revenue growth year on year since we started. Um, wasn't too hard in our first year, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so hopefully we can um, keep that up as we keep going. Um, so here's a sort of uh, snapshot of some of the brands we work with, and we work with them in quite different capacities. Um, but we work from sort of non-profits all the way through to um, bigger brands, banks, um, and we're starting to get into a lot of work with government as well, um, which is all very exciting. So in terms of us and our back, no, how did that photo? <laughs> 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 um, but then you're on photos. Yeah, right. <laughs> so um, I. Um, that you obviously me and Matt founded the company. Um, I came from a search engine optimization background, so that's where you, we look to get our clients' websites to the top of Google. Um, and yeah, I was working for a tourism firm uh, during university, um, and I, had, I was doing a marketing degree, so I think um, he thought that maybe I know about this stuff and I'll jump in, but at that time, uh, there was no one really to teach you what to do, and there was certainly no courses you could go on, so I just did a, a heck of a lot of research and look at what markets like US were doing and um, just tried to start implementing stuff. Um, and it yeah, went for a, a whole year with not much happening. Um, but after that year of working there, things really started, um, we started climbing up the ranks and um, we started looking at why that was happening. So we worked out how we could actually do different things to um, increase those rankings. Um, so that's pretty much um, how you know, this, this whole thing's developed. And um, it got to a point where we were outranking um, Transrail for rail passes, that was one of our keywords. They weren't too happy about that because we were selling their rail passes on our site, so we were just kind of clipping the ticket. But um, yeah, it got to a point where I almost made myself redundant because we got sort of got, I was like, well, now, now what do we do? And I thought um, potentially, you know, I could do this for other businesses. Um, so that's when Matt came in. Yeah, my uh, my background's a little bit less uh, <laughs> experienced in terms. Of, I was actually working part time in a garden centre. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a little bit of experience in gardening. There's still which, a lot of knowledge in there, mate. So you can imagine the plants in the office are pretty. Well looked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, but me and Matt went through school and, and university together as well. Um, you're, you're actually a PR firm as well yeah. uh, at that time. But we did both work at Palms Garden World during our uh, schooling days. So. <laughs> four years, four solid years. Four solid years, it's great. Um, but how we really started was um, I, I spoke with Matt about it, and um, because he was in, uh, doing some PR work in the digital space, and in 2009 it was kind of there was no real social media, it was more around. I guess they're looking at blogs and articles online, but I thought if we've got the Google stuff and you've got that, maybe we could combine them and make a, a really good service offering for um, clients and, and companies. So um, there was a seminar up in Auckland, and uh, it was a, I think it was called the Digital Marketing Summit. We thought, well, that would be a good one to go to. Let's just fly up there and see what this is all about. It sort of might give us a, a bit more, uh, a few more tools. But it turned out to be one of those get rich quick type seminars <laughs> where you've got like 100 people in the room and uh, they try and get everyone to start these little online businesses and make all this money. And I remember I said to Matt, I said, if, if any of these presenters come out, and they're all from the States and they had all the big presentations and the lights and stuff. Loud music. Loud music. Mm -hmm. I said, if any of these guys come out and say they can promise these people that they'll get them to the top of Google, I said, I, I know it's, yeah. It's, it's not. It's all made up. Yeah, it's all made up. And because uh, you, you can never really promise that, there's a lot of work involved. And uh, at that time, a lot of the old snake oil salesmen would say that. Um, you like, we can promise the number one position. So we're sitting there, about the third presenter, and out he comes, the big light show, you know, lasers and stuff. And he's like, Smoke. Yes. <laughs> he's like, I'll get everyone here to the top of Google. Like, oh, God, I'm looking bad. We're talking about. But it was really interesting to see all these people got so excited about this opportunity and that really sort of spurred us on I guess and um, at that time uh, companies were getting excited about it. They were, they, and it, as, as well, it was right in the middle of a recession in 2009-2010 so people were looking at other forms of advertising and digital they were looking at and going it's actually a, a lot cheaper alternative to you know, TV and print and radio so it was a pretty good time for us to, um, to get into it. So um, yeah, the next day that we got back, we pretty much jumped on the company's website and registered our company. 
took about uh, five minutes coming up with a name. We thought, yeah, well, iPods and iPhones were pretty much the that thing at the time, <laughs> so we thought we'd sort of jump on that bad bandwagon and came up with iMarketing, which was yep, pretty good. Yeah, marketing was so <laughs> his first business name. <laughs> Um, and then yeah, we uh, my parents had a spare bedroom, so we set up shop in there. Uh, got a couple of laptops, and um, away we went. No clients, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was um, sort of our pride and joy for the first um, first part of the business. So this was our first ever website. Um, there's a couple of great highlights on here. So imarketing.co.nz, a website's best friend. There's quite actually a, quite a good tagline. Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, yeah. the free uh, website SEO report. Um, never got clicked on, but you know, it's good features <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually built that. Uh, no, no development experience or design. Don't know if you can tell. But, yeah, it's uh, actually a good point. That he, so Tim would spend, oh, I don't know, four hours upon hours just moving little bits and pieces around on the site, and I'd be sitting there doing, you know, all that financials and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over, going, what is he really doing? <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, this was the second website, um, and uh, yeah, there's some slight improvements here. One of our favourites was the chat with us live feature. Um, do you want to explain how that worked? Yeah, so that would actually go directly to our <coughs> Gmail accounts, and people could talk with us online. Really cool feature. Mm. Um, Only got used occasionally, and uh, it tended to be in the evenings when Tim's mum would just um, sort of <laughs> come on with the chat. Uh, dinner's ready, boys. Come <laughs> <up here. laughs> but still, I mean, it looked great. Like, <laughs> these guys must be at the forefront. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, this is going to be good. Uh, yeah. This is our first, well, we thought, um, you know, just a young business, we had, we had no clients, we thought maybe some radio advertising. Yeah, well, the website's working with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was our first ever radio ad. Um, which I've just got this pointed. Oh, still no hits. What am I doing wrong? Getting your website out there isn't easy. I marketing are the internet marketing specialists iMarketing turns websites into assets. Drive the right kind of people to your website and will optimize your results on search engines, building links and promoting your website, professional service with competitive prices. For more info and contact details, head to i-marketing.co.nz. iMarketing, a small business's best friend. Yeah, that's right, it's beautiful. <laughs> I was actually only played on the hit <coughs> radio station X105, which no longer exists. So, um, <laughs> I probably can't even remember, I think it was three or four minutes. Don't think that one really worked either. So. <laughs> um, but there was a chance for it to get our first client. So we had um, a few meetings, and, and this was actually one of our first ones. And we went in there, we were, we were quite petrified, um, <laughs> because we, we knew that it worked for the tourism firm that I was working for, but we'd never actually tried it on any other businesses. So we'd, um, we'd made a little process around how we're going to do it, and we, um, we went in there and we sold it. And um, one of the questions that he asked us, in fact, we, we, we did the spiel, and he goes, this all sounds great, but I've got one question. How do I know you're going to be around in two years? And we sort of looked at him like, oh, okay. and Matt looked at me, obviously I was just going to answer it. <laughs> I was like, um, well, you don't know, uh, really. We don't know, but um, yeah, we're, we're really hoping that we'll be around a lot longer than that. Um, and that's really all we could tell him. Uh, <laughs> but for some reason, he, well, he went with us in the end. I think we were promising him some, some big things, um, which is really fantastic. So he... Um, he was our first success story as well. He's still a client today. Um, he's, he's based out in Petoni. So our job was to get him to the top of the um, search engine rankings. So um, yeah, this garden <coughs> sheds actually get searched about 2,400 2, times in Google per month. So being in those top positions, you get about 30% sort of, of that traffic through to your site. So um, yeah, and I think it took about a month and a half and he was in um, like position three. And uh, yeah, his sales increased by uh, $10,000 per month. So for us, that was that was our first case study. It was really fantastic because at this point we weren't really too sure if this was going to work or not. But then this case study allowed us to build that in and then really go out to other companies and go, "This is what we've done." I've got heaps of other case studies, but <laughs> let's look at this. Um, and it was really a confidence booster because I don't know what would have happened if this had failed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and it really this is actually the first time it got us thinking about our pricing model because probably one hundred and fifty dollars per month. A bit too cheap for <laughs> our service, so um, and that sort of started us really trying to work out how we price and you know, is it based on value or time and materials? So, um, yeah, a lot of work's been uh, gone to those kind of features. So, um, yeah, what we really found is that um, this is over the next sort of um, year or so of doing this was that organizations that were spending money in the wrong areas. Um, because when we looked at the overall marketing budgets, there was a heck of a lot going to everything apart from digital, and every time we would get a budget would be able to uh, really show that return on investment. And I think that's the, 
But the other thing we found that everything we were doing, we could track every dollar that was being spent because, of course, if you track a click to the website, and if someone signs up, you can say, well, that was attributed to the, what the work we've been doing. Um, and yeah, so that was really um, a couple of key points we thought. I think we're, we're in the right space. Um, also, at that time, social media was exploding. So um, everyone, I think we were running seminars on Facebook for Business, and we were just packing out rooms. And it was just because everyone needed to know like information. And so we are doing uh, presentations on that. It was really interesting because people would call us going, we need a Facebook page. And it, for us, it was, it was interesting because a lot of the time, like, that was the hit thing, right? Everyone wanted Facebook, they wanted to be on there. But it was about what are your goals and what are you trying to achieve? And a lot of times when you weighed up the cost of doing that and the resource, it was like, well, your money's probably better spent um, somewhere else. So that was the first time that we've really had to, um, I guess, try and challenge people's thinking and not just go for the next best thing, really look at what's going to be you know, most profitable um, for the, the clients. Um, yeah, um, one of the great things about digital marketing as well is that um, there's platforms like Google's advertising platform which is called Google AdWords and what you can do is you can, in a couple of minutes you can bang in some keywords there and have, uh, have an ad up appearing and so that means you can get instant traffic and the other thing with digital marketing is it's completely measurable so you can, we could, some of the campaigns we were running we would know within a matter of hours you know, whether or not it was looking like it was working um, so it just gave us huge, um, huge insight quickly into what's working and what's not working and we could be agile in that perspective and move things quickly, which was really good. Yeah, and I guess we also got, we're getting a little bit annoyed with the other people who are doing this stuff mm. in, the, in the space, because they were charging like on a percentage of spend, so whatever the client spent, they would charge a percentage, but we actually saw that there was not much value in there, it was like they were just sort of taking that and, and, and placing the ads, where we were thinking, well, you can actually really be fine tuning these campaigns to get much better results, um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a really interesting time where we were kind of trying to change the industry and change the way people were thinking about um, digital advertising. Cool, yeah, so in 2010 it was a big big year for us. We um, we hired our first employee. Um, it was time to get Tim off the, the website work. Uh, he was spending countless hours in that, like I mentioned before. Um, and I was sick of doing all the sort of um, dirty work. <laughs> so um, what we did was we um, went out on student job search and we uh, put a job ad up for a um, website developer and we found a guy um, based up in Whangarei and um, so we did a Skype interview with him and he seemed to know his stuff. So and I think he had a little website which had an animation on it which Tim was trying to do for weeks and weeks and, he, and so he saw that website and that's, thought, the guy. that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it instantly gave us a new service so it took Tim away from doing web development and it meant that we could do it properly, which was really, really awesome, um, which saved us a heck of a lot of time and meant that we could um, get our focus back. Um, so this is uh, Seb before he started with Uprise. And <laughs> that was actually him driving down from Whangarei. So. <laughs> yeah, and this is him after, and he's now a technical director at Uprise and um, yeah, the shareholder of the company as well. So um, yeah, we like to think we improve uh, <laughs> <improved> people. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so we really started evolving as, as a company um, because we were now building websites, we could really track what people were doing on them. So it wasn't just about you know, getting a, a pretty site up there. For us, it was always about um, you know, how, how's it working, how's the marketing that we're sending to it, how's that working as well. Um, but as soon as we started hiring, well, as soon as we hired our first employee, we had to get quite serious because it was, before it was just me and Matt. And, we were sort of you know, having a bit of fun and it was all great, but as soon as you've got to start paying someone every month, it kind of just it kind of changes around. We need to you know, actually get some um, solid revenue in here. Um, and also the name, uh, to us it, it didn't really fit what we were trying to do, and also it was really hard to explain to people over the phone, I'll just go to this website, i-marketing.co.nz, people are trying to ask you how to spell hyphen, you're like, no, no, just a dash, you're like, what? It's like, oh, okay. So we really needed something else, um, so it wasn't really working out for us. Um, and we wanted a brand that uh, really represented what we were trying to do um, and was, was a little bit more, um, I guess, interesting and uh, exciting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we moved to um, our name as, as we are today. And of course, we can actually uh, well, copyright that with iMarketing. There's, there's no way we were able to do that, which is always handy. Um, yeah, so this really uh, was, was, I guess, reflected us a lot more on what we're trying to do with, with clients. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the logo looks a lot better than the one that I did on English Paint. So. <laughs> um, but really, so today our, our focus has changed quite a bit. Um, we've really uh, narrowed it down and I think we've found our place in the world now. So we've coined a term called digital optimizers. 
Um, so we don't do uh, big branding campaigns. So we won't come up with the creative or the idea, but we'll work with agencies that do that. What we do is when it comes time to actually um, spend the money in digital, we want to be able to control that budget. And every dollar that's being spent, we want to be able to measure it and give clients a return on investment. So that's where the optimization bit comes in. Because of course it's all live, so you can see what's happening straight away and you can see if someone's coming to the site then they're leaving straight away, then that's obviously not a good use of spend. So we want to turn that component off and then put the money into what is actually working. So that's the optimization part um, that we're, we're really trying to push. Conversion optimization as well, that's um, a bit of a new area. Um, we've sort of been running that service for about eight months. Um, and it's, we're getting really great uptake in it. This is where, when you get people to a website, um, it's about increasing whatever action you're trying to get them to do. So if it's signing up for a form or using a tool, it's about how can we make that experience better so they do those things more. Um, and of course, if we can improve that, every other bit of marketing that gets done is improved as well, because if people come to the site and they're actually using it in a way that's um, you know, getting a lot more value. Um, and the last bit is data intelligence. So there's so much analytical data out there of how people are using websites, how they're using different marketing channels. Um, for us, we're really trying to pull those pieces together for organisations and not only show them where their digital spend's going, but where their spend's going in other areas. So we should talk about this as we go on. Cool. So in terms of what we're all about, um, I guess from day one it's always been about really that accountability and, and transparency. That's what we were selling to clients. Because we were doing digital, it was, you know, that, that was the sales piece. You can see where every dollar's going. Um, and that's really um, just filtered through our entire company. So we never bill off a percent. Uh, we always bill off the time that we're actually um, putting in to optimise these campaigns. Um, and it's about being transparent with clients because it's really important to actually show them what's working and what's not and they can take that and use that in other parts of their um, campaigns and things. Um, again, we, we don't mind who we work with. If it's an advertising agency and we're helping out their clients, if it's a big brand or, or government, it seems that everyone's got the same challenges. They're like, you know, what's the, what's the best thing to do? Where, where should I put my spend and money in? And what's really working um, for them, I guess? And so that's what we're trying to do now is, is really, really show clients that. Um, and I guess oh, the last bit is just to put New Zealand on the map and, and really create thought leadership here. <coughs> we've got a lot of great companies, especially in the tech space, you know, with Trade Me and Zero, um, Venn, some fantastic organisations, and they're doing awesome things and we want to kind of be a part of that with, with what we're trying to do as well um, and that's sort of where we, where we see ourselves, where we want to be. Um, so this is what we're going to, the other part of what we're going to talk to you guys about today is, is what, what's, what's new and, and happening in the digital space. So we've got conversion optimization, which we'll explain a little bit more. Um, a really exciting time with digital, digital experiences that change from user to user, um, we'll explain that. And the last bit which we're working on at the moment and we're really excited about is the end-to-end -end marketing accountability. Cool, yeah, so conversion rate optimization, just to give you guys sort of a better example of what, um, I've got an example here which I'll show in a minute, but just to explain it, so imagine you have a website and 100 people come to visit it, um, and one of them, and you're trying to get people to use your contact us page and send, a, um, send an inquiry through that, and one person did that, so one out of 100, that would be a 1% conversion rate. So the whole idea of conversion rate optimization is to move that 1% to 2% and then to 3%. And the way that you do that is through a whole lot of testing. Um, so this is an example that we have here of one of our clients called Smart Payroll who um, run uh, online payroll processing for um, sort of small to medium sized companies. So this is an example of a landing page that we built. So we sent uh, um, digital advertising campaigns to these both of these pages. And what we did is we um, split it. So 50% um, of the people that we send to it see one version and the other 50% see the other version. Um, so there's two versions here, so one's um, got this pretty smiley faced lady on there um, talking about payroll and the other one there has got a video of how the payroll software works. So just um, quickly a show of hands in the room who thinks the uh, smiling lady uh, version would be more effective than the video version? So we've got probably the majority there. Yep. Um, and the results were actually the other page converted a lot higher. Um, so it converted at 8.4%. So we sent thousands and thousands of people through these, um, these to these pages, and the other variant converted at 6.3%. So you can imagine at the, 
at the end of a year, if you're um, if you've got eight percent of people, well, a two percent difference, sorry, is a huge amount when you've got thousands and thousands of people coming to your site. Um, and so that's why conversion rate optimization is so powerful because if you're testing this stuff, you actually get hard facts on what's working and what's not working, and you can continually update and improve and optimize. Um, and for us, like we know why pages convert and why they don't, so it's mm -hmm. about identifying specifically why for that market. So, and of course. That just this um, sort of template and what we did here won't work for every single brand, so it's really important to test that. And when we know what those factors are, so it's about going, okay, how can we either reduce these things or increase other things, and we get the formula right. And that's why it's like a, it's a constant evolution of, of testing, measuring, just to see. Because even um, some of our clients, a, a, a half a percent conversion rate can be like an extra million dollars at the end of the year. So for us, it's about how can we sort of fine tune those points. And it's not just about direct sales, it's also about how people use websites as well. So if we can get a percentage of people using a tool or um, you know, potentially using or reading the frequently asked questions rather than calling the call centre, that's one that we're starting to do now is how can we take pressure off that call centre. So um, for us it's just about working out what the metrics are and trying to um, convert them. Yeah, and just to give you a bit of insight into potentially why um, this page worked over the other page, um, we're pretty confident because we've done a lot of testing around this. Um, but the video with the demo of the software has a huge impact on people and it gives them that trust on what they're going to get at the end of the um, sort of when they download the free trial, they know what they can expect. So it just gives them a bit more insight there. And so that's, um, that's why we're pretty sure, but we're never 100% sure. That's why you've got to always be testing. But um, yeah, that's the reason why this one converted higher than the other. Um, so. The next part is uh, we want to talk about is, is the custom content, and it's it's not really here yet, but we see it. Um, they're doing it over in the states, um, but it, it's it's going to be here really soon, um, and we're just trying to keep on top of it and seeing how we can use it. But um, what's happening at the moment, but probably everyone here knows this, is that um, the data or data is being measured um, on what sites visit uh, users visit, and also and what that's doing is it's building up a demographic profile of each of those people. Um, and that's just based off IP data. So if you go to you know, stuff.co.nz and you look at the sports page, you might look at business and you might go to trade me and look at different things. It's actually just building up that demographic information of that person. Um, and what's happening now is when that person comes to a website, that data is getting transferred to the website. So the website actually knows who that person is before they see any content. And this is where it's heading is the content can actually change depending on who that user is. So you've got the same website, but headlines can be swapped out, offers can be swapped out, and um, it's, it's a little bit kind of creepy, um, but, but what, what we're seeing is uh, consumers are, and users of the site are extremely engaged, because of course they don't know it's, that, that that's happening in the background, they just get to a website thinking, oh wow, this is sort of really catered towards me, and it's got the right feeling and things like that. So um, that's where it's all here, and that's the power of all of the analytical data um, that's, that, that we have access to. Um, so yeah, something that we're looking to um, implement uh, for clients. And of course, we, we test that. We, we, we test, is it better just to send them to a generic homepage that caters for every single person that could possibly be looking at it, or is it better to try something like this where it's, it's a lot more, um, I guess, targeted in the, in the um, in the content that we're producing. Um, this is what we're sort of really excited about because it moves away, it moves us away from just being a digital agency more into um, seeing the entire marketing spend for uh, for clients. So um, there's an old saying that half the marketing, I, so half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. Um, and it's like saying, well, I spent this much, and there was this effect, which was great, but. I don't know what exactly I spent it on that, that worked that well. So what we're trying to do is use the analytics side of uh, measurement to actually come up with some of those answers. Um, so we reckon we can get it to about 90% of what you spend across every channel. We can actually say how that attributed to sales or return on investment or whatever it might be. And how we do that, we try and track every component of sales now. So for example, um, call tracking is, is really fantastic. So on different advertising pieces, we'll put a different 0800 number. So imagine if you've got five TV ads running on different channels, they'll all have a different 0800 number. Um, if they get, and the only way someone could call that is from that TV ad. If someone calls the ad, uh, so it calls the number, um, we track um, the actual uh, call, so we can tell if it was a sale or not, or if it was a qualified um, lead or not. And that all goes into a little database. 
Um, then of course we can do the same on radio ads, on newspaper advertising, whatever it might be. So that gets sort of put away over here. And the next part is what we call vanity URLs. So um, an example of that is instead of uprise.co.nz, which has our URL, we might have a bit of advertising saying, go to digitalmeasurement.co.nz. It redirects to the exact same page, but we can tell if someone goes to that page. So we can say, if that was on a TV ad, for example, which will give you a, a live example in a, in a second, um, we can actually go, okay, that was attributed from that bit of advertising. Um, and then it allow, allows us to correlate all this information and go, well, TV didn't just have all these 800 numbers. Um, when TV was running, we actually saw that more people went to the website and um, you know more people might be clicking your ads and things like that. So um, th to give you an example of how this sort of looks, um, so this is a, a TV ad for Sigma. So there's a, that's a, again, that's the number that is only off from that ad and it only runs in that slot. Uh, they've got signafuneralplan.co.nz, which is what this ad's talking about. So of course, all of that's measured and tracked. Um, now, do you uh, show you what that looks like? So this is just a complete example. This isn't any client information. But what we can do is look at the cost of all of these um, spends on all these different channels. So, um, you know, TV ad might say be um, ten thousand dollars, and we'll look at how many calls we got. Uh, we can even look at how many of those turned into sales, and we'll put a number in there. So it could be say a thousand. And we do that for every single channel. So if, if they had a radio ad, there would be a line in there for that. If they had, um, you know, we've got what, what we do, which is our Google organic marketing, Google AdWords. Uh, we might be doing YouTube marketing or Facebook marketing. Um, and this is just a very simplified version. Obviously, we tend to have like six more columns of well, all these different things, impressions and things like that. Uh, but you really get a, a number figure on everything that you're doing uh, in those spaces. And you can quickly tell that hey, potentially Facebook marketing isn't ideal because we're getting paying $66 per action, where as if we look at something like Google Organic, we're paying three. So it's about looking at that and really um, using this information to go, well, potentially next quarter we might not do that and we might put it into other areas that are working really well. Um, and this is what we're trying to do for organizations now is really give them the, the whole picture of what's going on. Um, and the exciting bit is when we can start actually as I was saying before about correlating data. So, because of course, if someone looks at a TV ad and then just goes onto a website, you can't actually track that if they didn't use the URL. So it's about going, well, how can we overlap all that information and really start seeing what those, um, what those differences are. So in terms of Uprise and what our plans for the future are, um, we've got a, a roadmap of the next five years and we reckon we're only at about 16% of where we want to be. Um, but our big, our driver is really to empower organisations to make better decisions using digital data just because we have all this information we have access to and, and um, those decisions aren't just marketing based but it's also you know their customers, how they're interacting with um, the brand, uh, there's a lot of things we can pull out of um, the analytical data we can get. Um, and at the moment about, we're about a 95% referral based company so we haven't done any actually going out to organisations and saying this is what we can do. So. We're really, um, that's our next step, is to, is to really go out to brands where we can see a huge opportunity or organisations or any, any company that, that can benefit from what we're doing um, and actually show them um, the case studies and, and what we've got to offer. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a few, well, yeah, we're, we're planning to move into different markets as well, certainly Auckland, uh, we've got quite a few clients up there, but um, also internationally, because this is quite new stuff. Um, there's not many people doing it in Australia, there's quite a few doing it in the UK and the US, but those markets are just a sort of natural transition for us, um, and we really want to be heading into there in the next uh, three to five years. Sure, so that's, that's pretty much us. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, I think that's the next part, uh, on anything we've spoken about today, or anything at all, you want to have to answer them. Any guys on the Board of Government have no, we're not, unfortunately, but we work with two agencies who are, um, so we sort of kind of coattail under them depending on what we have to do. Um, but yeah, we're probably looking to um, see how we can get more involved in government like that. Yeah. But we do do some work for business.gov at the moment. So yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, so um, we're doing a bit of work. I think they're going to be a really good case study for us because we're actually doing a lot of this work for them. Yeah. And then we're going to try and show other um, government organisations what, what this, the power of this can actually do. I think, so. yeah. Do you what? find, sorry, I was going to say, do you find working for government is different to working for private sector companies? And if so, 
Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, what's what's great about it is the, the actual analytical data, for us it's just as exciting as working with a, a Signal or a Vodafone because we're really pulling out all the information and seeing what how people are using the sites. The problem that we're facing is, is, is a, a lot of, um, a lot more time has to be spent into getting the stuff set up. So that's really where we're sort of hindered is um, a lot of um, paperwork to go through and, and things like that, but um, and I think a lot of government sites are built on some uh, how do you say, pretty old school sort of technology. So when we're like, oh, could you just add this on there? It should take about half an hour, and we get, they get a quote back for like forty hours. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's just working through those different things. Um, but yeah, there, there is a lot. Um, I guess also the the, the privacy uh, and information sharing as well. So we've sort of nailed that with biz.gov. We've um, we went through a long sort of six months to get that right. So, uh, but yeah, there's a few just, uh, different things and that, that we have to uh, think about. As well. I think there's also quite a few more stakeholders in the government as well. Um, so that yeah, just needs to keep it. So it's, it's just a more slow moving process, but definitely the same um, the same principles can be applied. What's the Google organic? Uh, that's um, what sort of our, our bread and butter, what we started with, that's getting websites to the top of Google. So if you type something in Google, how we can get that to the top position. So there's two types of listings. How much it costs that's your hours kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, there's, there's like, I think Google is about 300 different factors to how a website ranks. So we sort of know what those are. So we'll go in with clients and make sure that they're ticking all those boxes and creating new content for them and all these sorts of things. That's sort of our time. When you're in, if you do a Google search, sometimes you'll see that there's ads and then there's sort of the free listings and people tend to sort of avoid the ads, but Google's mm -hmm. getting smarter about hiding the ads and making them better so you click them more often now. But um, uh, yeah, it's those free listings just below the ads. Yeah, yeah. It's Google again. Yeah. And like that, that in itself is quite fascinating. Like that top position gets about 30% of all of the traffic for that search. Mm -hmm. So when people are like, oh, I'm on the front page of Google, if, if you're on, if you're fifth, you're getting like 5%. So there's mm -hmm. a massive drop off mm -hmm. the further you go down. So it's really about, we need to get you to that top and of all like two or three. Um, so yeah, that's a really interesting space in itself. Mm -hmm. How do you monetize or evaluate the, the cost of, for example, getting one person to register for voting or what advice do you give? What can you guarantee? How many dollars per person or cent per person? Yep. Money that they can get them to yep. Yeah, that's, that's a, to a really good point. For election, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. So a lot of times before we sign on with any new organisation, we'll do a um, almost like a return on investment type um, uh, exercise where we go, this is how much uh, traffic we can drive, and this is the estimated cost, um, and that's just based off sort of historical numbers. We know we can actually find that out, um, and then we look at. Right, if we've got that much more traffic to the site, and then if we base it off the current website's uh, conversion rate for whatever the action is, if it's signing up for something, we'll, we'll look at that number and we'll go, okay, we can spending this much money, getting this many more people, this is the current rate that they're um, completing the action, this is the output. And we go, does that make, you know, is, is that going to be viable? Is that better than what you're spending before? And that's pretty much the baseline that we start with, with almost every client. We'll never sign on a new organisation if we don't know we that we can make a return on investment for them. Um, we, we sort of learned that about 12 months ago when it was, um, yeah, it, it, we, we, were at, we were at a stage where we were just sort of, we, we would take any client that came on board because they looked like a really good client, but we didn't do the groundwork and actually going, you know, not just around the, the cost of it, but also um, looking at their sales processes as well. So that's what some of the time would fall over. We would drive a lot of leads and then they're like, oh, hold on. We, we can't, we're not dealing with those or, or we'll sort of neglect those and, and it kind of reflects badly on what we're doing. So we're really, uh, I wouldn't say particular with who we work with, but we make sure that we can um, really make that return on investment for them. Does that kind of answer your question? <laughs> yeah. If you go back to that slide, how that turned out, you Yeah, so um, this is what, we've sort of put actions in here because it can change from client to client. So it could be like a direct sale on the site, it could be signing up to something or 
Um, it could just even be... Could be visiting um, a key page on the website because you want more people to see that information. It just depends on what the goal is that we've sort of outlined with the client that they're trying to achieve here. Right. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if we were measuring the return on investment, how do you Yeah, so um, with and this is this is I guess this applies more to government when you're not selling anything. There's no sort of monetary value. Well, it's very easy with monetary because you go if they bought something, just say the action was buy this hundred dollar product, then obviously you can look at that and go well, that, that's all fantastic. But um, what we're tending to do now is looking at how we can put a dollar value on action. So if it is you know maybe using a tool, uh, you know if you're on a government site, how <coughs> many people are using this tool. Um, and we're trying to put a, a dollar value on that so we can actually line it up with the cost of spend. Um, but occasionally we, we, we won't actually put any monetary value, we'll just say these were the actions that were done. Um, but, uh, and the other thing we're looking at is um, if we can like reduce call volume to um, you know, sort of call center teams, then that's a really good one because we can go, well, if we've halved the call volume, you've actually halved the amount of people that you need in that team. So then there's a, a sort of ROI on that as well. But every client or organization is really different and we just try and work that out with them. Um, but it's important for us to know that, to know actually what we're doing and how that's affecting the, um, not necessarily the bottom line, but how that's actually affecting mm -hmm. the, the organization. Also, you mentioned about uh, working with different clients. Um, what about the clients haven't got uh, Yes, so um, there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, so it depends on what industry or area that that um, particular client's in. But there's a lot of like, um, for example, just an example is Google Trends. You can go in there and sort of search around and see what other client uh, customers, um, competitors, keywords are being searched and things, and get a um, idea of what sort of levels of traffic and engagement and awareness is happening in those areas, and then you can sort of apply that sort of thinking to the process, uh, to, the, to the research you're doing and sort of start to forecast from there. So that's how we generally sort of attack that and sort of process. Yeah, so that, that's, that's looking at more of the market stuff yeah. at each client. And then we also, we've worked with over 165 different clients and doing this stuff. Also, it's also looking back into that and trying to pull some insight that. out of uh, if there's anyone in a similar type of area, what we've been able to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also, there's another point of every website's different, so you know you, you never really know because um, there could be a some you know the copy or the imagery on the site might be wrong, and so it's, it's about how we sort of look at that and try and estimate that as well. But yeah, there's a lot of we always just try and give it our, our best guess to start with, um, and then we just work off that. Mm -hmm. and, that. and it is an ongoing process. Like you start somewhere and you start to learn on the journey as you go, and you continually sort of get gain insights and tweak and sort of go from there. So. Yeah, that's kind of the idea that we put in front of our clients that it's an ongoing process. Yeah. How do you manage the privacy issues in the sense that if you are collecting a database of people who have signed in to become voters in the next election, do you use that data for some other commercial purposes or is it kind of sandboxed or yeah, so how, do you, how, do you, how do companies want this being Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got a lot of like, sort of data use agreements, um, and those are actually part of the, the biz.gov was actually getting all that information. Yeah. Um, and then there's some really strict guidelines about what we can and can't do. So that's sort of all um, sort of the, the letter of the law type of thing. Um, and also, you know, if people need to um, tick a box to say that they want to be contacted, you can't just sort of take their name and email and go, oh, we'll send them out some, some email about. Um, so it's, it's about uh, learning all, all those things, which we've pretty much got. <laughs> a lot of updating privacy policies as well on websites and different areas as well. So a lot of work coming around that area. And not many people are yet surfing anonymously. That's right. Want to happen. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's actually starting to. Um, yeah, there's like four years ago, Google would tell you everything about users. They'll tell you what they typed in Google to find you. Um, but what they've done now is they've even limited that to if people uh, have logged into Gmail, which a lot of people are, they've got Gmail accounts on for their um, you know, sort of personal accounts, if they're logged in, the automatic setting is don't show websites anything. So don't show them what keywords I'm coming in on, don't show them you know, certain demographic information. So that's sort of a challenge um, for us is because that really helps us and it means that we can improve websites based off that information. Um, but yeah, it's about how we can um, sort of work around that or just get any insight that we can from it's informed content for the consumer who want to help you out 
to mm. get personalized content. Yeah, that's but right. They need to balance their mm. yeah. difficult time. That's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> We've got hundreds of thousands of small businesses in New Zealand and most of them are not digitally engaged. The research tells us that it's a very low level of engagement. What does it take for businesses to get excited about um, becoming digitally engaged? I guess the thing is, is looking at what their consumers are doing. That often for us was, and especially when we started, that was our biggest selling point. And we could almost get any business excited when you go, your consumers are looking for your product or service right now. This is the amount of them looking. And when they look at it, they go, oh, wow. So you need to now get in front of them. And then that alone is just, they, they can see the potential behind this. So I think that was our, what we started doing was just doing the research for them. And you know, the research might only take sort of 15 minutes to get some data on what people are typing in. And you just show them that information. And I think um, for us is really linking it, especially for small businesses, because we're sort of this, still a small to medium sized business, looking at the return that they can get. And you know, um, also weighing up because a lot of businesses are still have yellow pages and they might have all this different stuff. And we go, okay, but here are some alternatives to that. And this is the, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of it's low cost stuff as well. And this is what you can achieve with it. So I think for us, it was just really showing them a direct uh, result on their bottom line and what they can achieve. Um, and that tends to get them quite excited. <laughs> are there any um, industries that, that you're focusing on particularly or do you see opportunities for the growth? In terms of um, new customers? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, we're going through that process right now because we're in a bit of a unique situation uh, where we can only really work with one big company in each industry um, because you know, obviously it's the you know, competitive nature of it. So um, we've got sort of the top 10 industries in New Zealand and we're trying to grab a, a big a brand in each. So that's, um, yeah, sort of what we're looking at is we've already got a bank can't get any more banks, so what, what's, what's the next step and how can we move forward? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, that, that's where Matt was talking about the Google Trend stuff. You can really see where um, opportunities are, when you know, search numbers start uh, ramping up for different things, and now I guess that would be the chance to look at those industries. But um, yeah, for, for us personally, it's about um, sort of where, where are those markets where we are um, and how we can help them out. Is there any challenges um, yeah, I think that for us, we, we love working with overseas clients because typically the competitors over there are more advanced than here, um, which is great for us because it means we can benchmark ourselves uh, against international um, sort of competition. But in terms of challenges, the, the biggest thing is, is the, the time zone issue, <laughs> of course, um, because we can do all of uh, the optimization work where we've got people in there looking at the numbers you know, swapping things in and out. We can all do that from Wellington, that's fine, but a lot of the time, even in what we do, a face-to-face -face meeting is still really valuable. Um, so we, we're doing a lot of traveling up, um, you know, even to, to Auckland and things, but um, really I think that's what, um, when you have those kind of meetings, it's you, you can explain things a lot more, you can really get uh, more, more information out. But um, I mean, we're still doing Skype and things like that as well. It's, it's just about looking at that sort of um, time zones. But the other challenge that we've found is, because um, of course we're, we're so uh, keyword focused, what people are typing in, we find that people in the UK, for example, use completely different language to people here and in Australia. So for us, it's, it's kind of like, oh, we sort of need someone in the UK to go, okay, this is the market. What kind of words are you typing in? Because we're coming up, we're finding really strange things. Like for example, that, um, that payroll uh, company, uh, New Zealand, the, the biggest phrase is payroll. Obviously, people are talking payroll, how do I payroll? In Australia, they don't use payroll, they use payroll tax. Because over there, that's sort of the coin term. You need to get your payroll tax and sort that out. So payroll is actually a lot lower, but payroll tax is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we, we do research and we find that out. But um, it's really those sort of nuances across different um, things. Uh, also, the cultural barriers mm -hmm. as well. Like um, some things that work really well here, we might try them again in the UK. and. It, it just won't work and we need to sort of reevaluate. and then what we end up over there that works to what here is actually two completely different things. I guess that's why that testing element is, yeah. is just so important. See, so there's a lot of different challenges uh, with working with international clients. The other, the, one of the positives with working with international clients though tends to be that there's a whole lot more uh, traffic and data that you can get. So we, if we want to run a test, for example, they have to have a certain amount of visitation for it to actually reach sort of statistical significance. So obviously we can run a lot more t tests a lot quicker with when there's a lot more traffic coming through. So um, sort of we get quite excited when, um, when we get the opportunity to work internationally because 
Yeah, there is just a whole lot more data available there. And especially with, with what we do, so return on investment focus. Yeah. So if people, bigger budgets mean more, um, you know, customers that we can get through for what we're doing. So um, yeah, it's kind of really exciting when we get those opportunities. So if you already know the IP number of the client, then you know this is an Australian coming in in Wellington from his mobile phone. So yeah. I need to know that this is the kind of bank he wants. Not yeah, the that's, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean. Um, uh, that, that's really, it's really interesting with uh, people who are doing travel, especially to New Zealand, uh, tourism. So if they look for something in Australia and then they come wherever and they come here, we know that they've done that connection. So you can actually, uh, when they get here, because a lot of people will do their booking when they're here, like for you know um, any adventure stuff or, or tourism stuff. So when they're here, you actually know that they've come in from another country. So that's when, and then you can know what country. So you can actually have you know specific things and wording that you can put in there so and um, that's where it gets really interesting with the actual advertising and, and how powerful that can be and that's where sort of apps come in as well so if they download an app and you know that they've downloaded that app uh, previously in australia then you can sort of set alerts on it so that when they hit queenstown it might pop up with like a little notification saying hey have you thought about doing a bungee jump or something like that um so it's, yeah it's pretty powerful stuff yeah. uh in a similar sort of vein in terms of tourism things uh do you do any kind of stuff of the Google equivalent in China in terms of the Baidu. Baidu, Baidu yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should probably tell um, that's, uh, So with Google um, well, everywhere, mm. you, can, you can't buy your way to the top. Mm. But what we've found with Baidu, you need to pay to actually be on there. Mm. So it's a completely different model. And we, um, yeah, did, did some, we've done some work in that space. We actually did it for Education Wellington. Um, how do we get the site when people are typing in, you know, I want to um, study, in yeah, study in Wellington or even study in New Zealand, how do we pull people here? Um, fascinating exercise because, uh, you know, there's, I think what we found was it was like a hundred times the search numbers for everything. So it was like, even, you know, I want to study in Wellington, you know, city, uh, where should I go? It's still got like, you know, 2,000 searches. <laughs> it's just like even the really micro stuff gets searched heaps. So um, for us, it was, because uh, fortunately enough, our designer is actually fluent in Chinese. Um, that's, that's where she's, she's from. So we had her really helping us with these different things. And again, I mean, you talk about nuances, somewhere like China, where <laughs> it's a completely different market. So um, yeah, we have had experience there, more with the paid advertising rather than the organic stuff. What's really interesting on that as well, though, is Google's really transparent with how they approach things. Why do not so much? And so if what we found was um, we were doing some paid advertising, and so it seemed to be quite interesting that when we started doing the paid advertising, the free listings started to go up as well. As soon as we stopped doing the paid advertising, the free listing just m m sort of disappeared. Yeah, mysteriously <laughs> disappeared, which was quite interesting. So yeah, there's definitely some uh, some things to be aware of. When you yeah. Yeah. And especially well, in China, uh, again, that was an area we were looking at because of course so many New Zealand businesses want to go over there and how they market and uh, uh, you know some simple things where we need to register, a, well, it was better if we registered a, a dot, .cn, dot .cn yeah. domain, if we had the actual website hosted in China, so it made it look as Chinese as possible, the site had to be um, fully uh, translated, and not in like a Google Translate mode, and the actual site had to be layered and things like that, so uh, we learned quite a bit by doing that exercise, um, and yeah, it was, it was quite fascinating, it's completely different to uh, yeah. how, how Google operates. Yeah, I would like to add one point, because Google has been banned in China. Yeah. Chinese people can't use Google. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have to use a Facebook in Chinese. Yeah. That's a search one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We actually find that um, people will, there's a service now in China where you can pay to get your IP redirected to Hong Kong. So Hong Kong yeah, has yeah, a yeah, Google. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, yeah. So now we see the whole, like Hong Kong Google is coming up. There's lots of people that's working around. Yeah. So um, yeah, it is. It is really interesting. But um, it's a space that not a lot of people, not, not just New Zealanders, but you know other um, companies around the world are still trying to crack that market. Um, and how do they, you know, get in there and how to get to the top? Because um, it's it's really interesting when you look at how Baidu ranks certain websites and why they're in those positions. So. Um, yeah, it's a space that we've certainly looked at, and um, I guess if, if, we could, if we could crack that, um, well, yeah, <laughs> there's a huge yeah. opportunity there yeah. uh, in itself. And um, something you've been that 
when you started out, you weren't aware that there was government support available that you could have got, but yeah. anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's getting a lot better. Like when we started out, we were just um, just we had no idea of all the other <laughs> things. But I think people are now trying to start sort of tech projects or high growth projects, which mm -hmm. which can help. But for us, because um, we've done a lot of work with Creative HQ as well, um, in those sort of new business in the new business space, I think it's about really showing those sort of companies how to validate the market so that um, so when they go in there that they've got an understanding of who their market is because we find that I mean, we, we work with a lot of companies of course in Wellington is just you know we, we meet them all the time is that their positioning changes like as soon as they start like launching a product it was like oh actually they didn't want that at all so we're now like sort of you know, changing and moving and I think um, to get a lot of that information out in the start would really benefit um, some of these guys um, but I also think that mentorship um, is really powerful. Um, so we got, uh, we sort of worked and we paid quite a lot of money to get some really good quality business mentors in. Um, and I think that, that we've learnt a lot from them um, and would have potentially made a lot more mistakes without them being involved and sort of they've pointed us in the right direction whenever we've had sort of a tough situation. Um, and I think that that's one thing that could really help a lot of, a lot of organisations is just getting really good solid mentorship programs in place somewhere to bounce ideas off and things like that and that, that's been a huge factor for that, mm. us getting um, to where we are it's just through that sort of advice. Yeah, definitely and I think also um, which which yeah, I think you'd be right at the moment but um, you know, getting international speakers and in to talk about their story and what they've been able to do and just getting people along who um, you're sort of interested in that space because that's when you've really got the, the captured audience right and you can sort of then share the rest of the, the story of this is how you know we can help and, and this mm -hmm. is where you have to go to so I think it's just about getting the, those people into the room uh, as well but certainly the, the advisory point um, so we've got an advisory board now and yeah they've been sort of instrumental in our growth um, because they say you know you, you make a mistake and it's great because you learn from it we're sort of like well how about we learn from people who've already made the mistake so we don't have to make it <laughs> which is uh, you know, that, that's helped quite a bit. Yeah. What about like um so you obviously studied marketing at uni. Um, something else we've been looking at is how, like, the relevance of tertiary qualifications. And yeah. the, like when you were at uni, um, sort of thing you got into is sort of a pathway that most, like, the majority of young grads would see. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so I, I do a lot of uh, speaking at uh, Victoria Uni. So I'll come in at some 300 <coughs> level all the way up to uh, honours and masters. And it's so interesting when I look through those books on what they're teaching them, there'll be like a paragraph like that big on search engine optimization and like that big on digital advertising. And this is the sort of online marketing course of thinking, this, just, this should be a book like on that. <laughs> but of course it changes so quickly that it's hard to actually come up with new stuff. And especially when, I mean, that's, that's why we do it because we can actually get in there and there's you know a couple of hundred students there who go, this is all the cool stuff that's happening. Get excited about it and that's the, sort of direction they have to go because I think it's difficult to get that tertiary education in there. I mean marketing is, is probably a good base because it's you know it's working on this stuff but um, I it would be great if there was something else out there that people could who are interested in it could actually go through that, that yeah. channel. I think tertiary as well um, sort of in those lower levels um, is quite uh, theory based and not practical so it's really hard to apply that sort of thinking if you haven't had experience whereas when I sort of talk to people doing sort of more masters level they've kind of got that they can apply it a lot easier because they've kind of got that critical, well they've got that experience behind them to apply that sort of thought to it. Mm -hmm. So um, there's like some really good programs that are run by like marketing associations and things like that where you can actually get a lot more relevant digital sort of knowledge and understanding and it's more practical. And I think stuff like that for, well in our industry is a lot more useful than say going and getting that sort of tertiary level education on digital marketing because it's yeah it's a little bit behind mm. and also um we're not necessarily looking for marketers but also really analytical people because mm. a lot of us as you can tell you can mm. measure yeah. every single click and what everyone's doing so that i think the having the mindset of being able to look at sets of data and going okay i'm not afraid of that i can look at it and i know what the value is for the clients so that's a, sort of more of what we're looking for now as well as people who can sort of take that information and really um, come up with with um, good conclusions around it. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, I mean, just following up on the question, do you think uh, like students in New Zealand are aware that there are opportunities to create their own business this way, or do you think it's important that you know, they kind of get relevant work experience, like your story with, with working for the tourism, do you think you've got this business and that work experience? 
um, I, I think it'd probably be better to do that, um, just because, especially even when we started, we would take any job that came to us, from making a Facebook app to you know creating um, social media posts every day, and it was really we were all over the place. And mm -hmm. that for us was, it was even though we thought everything was going well, you know, we, it was. A, you know, really bad in terms of actually getting vision and focus. So I think once you've gone through that work experience, you actually go, okay, I, I know what I want to do, and I know that here's a, a, a market that I can actually tap into, as opposed to, and I guess a lot of younger people will just you know, bust through and go, right, let me, you know, I'll grab anything, because exactly what we did, which yeah. um, actually, you know, well, there, there, were, there were benefits in the fact that we tried a lot of different things, and we worked out what worked and what didn't, but I think in terms of actually having a sustainable business, um, it's far better to, to specialise in certain areas. I think gaining uh, that experience from, from working uh, I think helps. there's a case as well for installing a lot more confidence in people. Yeah. Um, because people sort of go down a road and then they think they can't change. Yeah. Whereas what we've sort of found is, oh, we go down one area, but if it's not working, okay, we'll just go to the next yeah. thing. But people seem to get quite frightened by change. Yeah. So it's about sort of telling people, you know, don't be scared to fail. If you fail fast, just move on, you know, yeah. and don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, and that's something that I hear quite a lot with, even like in sort of our, uh, with our friends and things. They're kind of like, "Oh, how did you do it?" and things like that. And it's just about, you know, well, we just decided that we're going to do it, and if it didn't work, you know, we'd just find the next thing. And just sort of having that belief and confidence to do that. And I think a lot of people are quite intimidated and scared of that. Um, so yeah, it'd be. Great. I think I heard a great thing of someone saying, like talking about entrepreneurs. Mm. They're saying they're really just starters. So that, that they should there's almost be like a, a cinema between you know that because that, that's all they're doing you're know, going out and starting things and trialing and, and I think that's yeah that's sort of that, that point there is that's what's most important. Mm. What do you think? I mean, there's a difference between kind of being a business and being a knowing marketing and stuff and actually setting up your own business rather than going to work for something else. What do you think it is about you two that gave you that kind of ability to kind of think about running your own business as opposed to just going and working for someone else? Um, yeah, it was quite funny because we, we literally started the business the, the day we got back. We had no idea what we were doing, we just jumped <laughs> straight into it, which helped in the sense that, again, there was no fear, we were just away we go. Um, but yeah, I think um, it, me and Matt work really well um, together because I'm very um, kind of I, I, I try and get as much in as possible, and I'm really like working that nth degree where Matt's more of the guy who's sort of pulling it back and going, well, hold on, before we jump into that, let's like look at those different risks. I think that complements yeah. really well, um, because if it was one or the other, if it was just me, we'd probably be all over the place like we were <laughs> years ago, and if it was just Matt, it might be a two-man band, so it would be yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, and I think... Um, to, to go back to that point and, and what Matt was saying, I, I think we wish we should have got advice yeah. a lot sooner yeah. on how we actually run a business because we're in the point now where we've got you know 12 staff, we'll probably have about 15 by the end of the year. Staffing is just one massive issue that I think um, is really important to nail and you know culture and all these different things that we've never really had to um, experience. But um, one great bit of advice we got uh, early on was uh, set up your processes like you've got 100 people. Yeah. So if you set up everything like that, when you grow, everything's going to scale with you. Um, but in those early stages, it was literally we would build a process for just that time. And like, okay, that's done now. If we have to go back, and of course yeah. that's, that's not, not a good way to run a business. So yeah. um, you're really getting those learnings across. I think was quite important. Having those right people around us uh, really, really helped yeah. us.